everyone in this video, we're going to be looking at how we as traders can use the previous year of data and experiences and put that information towards setting future goals and improving ourselves in the upcoming year. So this video is going to be broken down into two main sections, looking back on the previous year and what it can tell us and looking forward to the coming year and how we can prepare for it. As we're looking back, we want to reflect on our experiences and our performance. Do we want to make major changes using the new year as a pivot point or are things going well and we want to make some minor changes, but mostly stay the course? What kind of data can we review to help us make these decisions? As we look forward, we want to trim what's not working and focus on what has been working. And we want to look at what goals we have for the coming year, both monetarily, physically, and in all aspects of our lives and trading. At the end, I'll look into my personal answer of these questions, looking back on the year and looking forward to the coming year. So as we reflect back on 2019 and we look at our data and our results, for a lot of people, this is going to directly translate into a 2020 resolution of, I need to be taking better data on my trade results. There are two kinds of traders out there. The first is going about this with a sledgehammer. They have their head down, they're over trading, they're losing a lot of money quickly. And when you ask them what's working and what's not working, they don't have a straight answer for you. The second kind of trader is meticulous. They're using a scalpel to trade. They're keeping their data and they can go back and tell you, well, in the last three months, I've had success on 65% of my oversold bounce plays, but I have failed. I've only had success on 40% of the plays I've gone short. And maybe that person says, okay, well, I'm going to focus on shorting less. I'm going to do that less. And I'm going to trade oversold bounces and focus on that more. We never want to paint ourselves into a corner where we're a one trick pony, where we only trade one kind of setup because that limits our opportunity. That being said, if we're just learning and trying to gain confidence in this market, we can absolutely start that way and use that one style of trade. Let's just say it's oversold bounces. And then maybe if there's no oversold bounces in a blue sky breakout, S&P 500, then I look to apply it to the commodity space, to inverse ETFs, maybe to the cryptocurrency space. But we need to know what we should stop doing and what we should focus on. We can also have data that tells us, is our risk to reward scenario favorable? If I am winning on 60% of my trades and I am in the red, that tells me that's a big red flag. That tells me I'm doing a bad job with stop losses and the fewer number of losers are far outweighing the number of winners. Now, in the opposite scenario, if I'm winning 40% of the time, but I'm in the green, that tells me I'm doing a good job, I'm choosing setups that have good risk to reward scenario, and I should continue on that path because all I need to do is get to a positive rate of return, and those gains will continue to increase. It can be even down to the point where you look and say, well, on Tuesdays, I'm red 75% of the time. Who knows why Tuesdays are not your day? Maybe it's trash day in the morning and that throws off your whole routine. Who knows? But if that's the case, maybe I reserve Tuesday as an education day for trading, for reading up, taking courses, studying, and I just focus on the days where I'm trading better. So I don't want to be a hypocrite because I personally do not take this data meticulously with my own trading. What I do at this point in my career is I am just tracking every couple of days where my crypto account is, where my stock account is, and just watching those fluctuations. And keep in mind that that's nine years in. Back when I was in my first five years of trading, I was journaling, I was keeping track of my trades, and I was reflecting upon that data in terms of where I should focus on my successes and where I should stop with my weaknesses. So there are services that can help us see this data. One of them is TraderView. There's others out there. Again, I personally never use TraderView, but I've talked to enough people that do, and I can see it superficially that it is nice and organized. And we'll look at that in just a second as a possible tool to use. And then just straight up journaling or entering it by hand, whether it is via a, a notebook, a pen and paper, or with a spreadsheet. So here's an example of a notebook from a couple years ago where I would write out tickers, I would write out key levels, whether it was support or resistance, and then I would write out my trade game plans and how it played out. I personally love taking notes. I used to like it in high school and college. I like how it imprints in my brain when I'm physically writing it out by hand. I like the ink on paper. I like everything about it. So that was my style that I preferred. That being said, if you are a spreadsheet person, you can do that as well. And I did shift a few years into my trading to starting to track things on spreadsheet. And this is exactly how I did it. 
I would write the ticker, my target entry, where I would put my stop level, my target to sell, where I actually did exit, and then the profit and loss. I would write a couple notes with that play because we're not gonna be able to remember exactly how things played out if it's, you know, we're looking back a month ago on a trade. So putting those notes in can help us trigger our memory saying, oh yeah, we had an upgrade that morning and I played off that hourly support. We can also make a key here and just use this as a style guide where I can just write down what kind of play it was. And that really helps with going back to review as well, where I can organize things, look at all of my top fishing plays and see what percentage of success I had on them. What was the risk to reward scenario on those and how were my results? Should I stop top fishing? Should I focus more on playing inside equilibriums? Should I focus more on playing the breaks of the equilibriums because I didn't do well inside the equilibriums? And again, if you do not have this data compiled, you as a trader are not going to have any idea what setups are working for you and what ones aren't. You can even get down into as much detail as writing the date and the time. So you can go back and look at the actual chart setup months in the past and reflect and review and learn from mistakes or successes. So here's the website I was talking about, traderview.com. I have no affiliation with this website and I've never even used it, but I know enough people that have shared that it has helped them. And I also see people in our chat room posting their setups on these trades and it's nice and clearly organized and it can help you look at data. They have free plans and paid for plans where you get more features, but worth checking out if you want something more than just pen and paper or a spreadsheet. So there's two ways that we can head into January 1st. If we have been trading well in 2019 and we are liking where we're at and we ended the year on a good note, we don't want to be making any major changes. We want to treat January 1st as a completely insignificant date. It means absolutely nothing to us. Yes, we want to prepare for forward looking. We want to establish some goals, but as far as significant changes in our game plan, we're not going to be looking to take that route. If things have not been working well, you can use it as a line in the sand. From this point forward, I'm going to change things up and I'm going to perform better. I'm going to establish a better routine. I'm going to get better sleep. I'm going to take better track of my trades and reflect upon them. I'm going to prepare for an extra 30 minutes for the coming trading day. There are all these kinds of ways that you can use this as a psychological pivot point to change what has not been working. Changes in equipment. So if you know me at this point, you know I am not the person to tell you to spend two grand on a setup and have six screens. I have never had more than three screens in my life. I have, for the most part, had two screens and have never spent more than $99 on a monitor. Technology is really good today and a $99 monitor does really well. So that's all I have needed to generate income as a trader. But there are scenarios where if you're only trading on one screen, it's worth investing in yourself to upgrade to that second screen. That definitely makes a difference. If you have a bad back and it hurts to be sitting for a long time and trading is not fun for that reason, you definitely want to invest in yourself and get a better chair so that is no longer an issue. Routine pivot. This goes way beyond trading and it is extremely important. I cannot stress enough how we have sleep routine, health routine, physical and mental well-being, these all come first. If these are not aligned, it doesn't matter how good a trader you are. If I'm sleeping four hours a day and I'm eating junk food and I feel sick, I'm not going to be a good trader. We have to have these aspects of our lives aligned first to be able to successfully trade and to work off of that. It's the base of the pyramid and stealing from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And if you don't know what that means, research Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but I did my own little version here for a trader's hierarchy of needs. Introducing the chart guys, trader's hierarchy of needs. And you'll see down at the bottom and the base, the most important aspect that everything else builds off of physical and mental well-being. This stuff is very straightforward, but we get caught up in the day-to-day -day routine of our lives and we can forget some of this stuff. A sleep cycle where we're getting at least seven hours is very important. Hydration. We need to wake up first thing and drink a big glass of water and stay hydrated throughout the day. We need to be eating healthy. We need to be stretching and having physical activity so our bodies remain healthy. We need to be surrounding ourselves with supportive people who challenge us and lead us to excel. 
All of these things are essential as the backbone of becoming a successful trader. If you ask me, what is the reason you're able to stay consistently successful as a trader, aside from obviously putting in a lot of time and effort, I would say my sleep cycle. If you break up my sleep cycle right now and force me to stay up till midnight and still wake up at the same time, I guarantee you my trading results are going to suffer from that. We have to get a routine that works for us, that is healthy for us, and that we can build everything off of. Education, that one's very straightforward. Congrats, you're already on the path by watching this video. There's courses out there. There's tons of online information. We've got tons of free videos on YouTube. Never stop educating yourself because there is enough information out there where we can't possibly learn everything. So have that constant drive. If you find yourself in a point where you don't care to learn anymore, that's a bit of a red flag. That shows you that your motivation is dwindling a little bit and you need to find a way to spark that motivation again because we wanna be able to find ourselves in a, a situation where we are constantly wanting to learn more and wanting to read articles and listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos. Experience, the more we do something, the more comfortable and confident we're going to get at it and the better we are going to get at it. We're going to learn from our mistakes and we have to have that data to be able to review so we can learn from those mistakes. But the more experience we have, the better a trader we're going to be. Interaction. This is one that before the chart, guys, I never would have anticipated how significant this is. And if you ask me what is the number one biggest step up that your trading game took, it would be teaching other people and having to look back and dig deep into my subconscious and my thoughts to explain things. Why am I doing something? Why did I enter here? And then break down exactly why. These are all things that very significantly increased my ability as a trader because I was able to reflect on myself very in depth in a way that I would not have done if I was just on my own. So ways that individuals can do this. Of course, we don't have many traders in our lives that we can interact with. That's why the internet is such a great place. So having a community, having individual friends that we talk to about things that we use as a sounding board of ideas, friends that are unbiased on a certain trade where we might have some bias and they can chime in and say, hey, you're missing this little aspect of the trade and just little work groups where we can try and improve each other. Again, that goes down to the aspect of surrounding yourself with people that support you and drive you to excel. Repetition, of course, once we get all these things down and we just keep repeating it, find what's working and repeat it, keep doing it. Eventually that experience plus repetition leads to a career of being a successful trader. Then you're in the flow state. This is the peak that you wanna be in. We have multiple videos on YouTube about flow state. We, I did one where I did a little interview with a neurologist who was a Chart Guys member and then one video that I just specifically talked about the flow state. But this is the point where you get where things are easy, essentially. Trading is not easy, but you can get into these points of flow state where it is very easy and it feels like you can't go wrong. And those periods do not always last, but the goal is to extend those periods of flow state as long as possible because that is when you are in the zone executing and trading is easy. So looking forward to 2020 goals, what's the difference of a concrete versus a vague goal? A vague goal is I wanna be a successful trader. That means something different to every individual that you ask. Concrete goal is I wanna make $10,000 trading in 2020. I wanna beat the S&P 500 trading in 2020. Those are goals that you can write down and strive towards. Physical and mental well-being. we certainly just went over all of that. I wanna lose five pounds in 2020. I wanna have a healthy stretching routine. I want to peak clear every day because I'm hydrated. I want to make a friend who is also learning how to trade and I can interact with. Time, this is a big one. So as we know, time, the more time we put into something, the likely better we're going to be doing at it because we're putting in more effort, learning more, having more experiences, but we cannot lose sight of everything else. And that's where time management comes into play. So let's say I quit my job and I'm having some, do not quit your job unless you have multiple years of success as a trader. Let's say I have two years of success as a trader. Things are going really well and I'm confident. I quit my job and I then say, all right, well, I'm going to start putting in 12 hours a day to being a trader. Meanwhile, I'm neglecting my wife and my family. I'm eroding the base of that hierarchy of needs of that pyramid because I'm now going to be fighting with my wife and I'm not going to be giving my family the support they need. And there's going to be friction there. And that's going to make everything that comes above that physical and mental well-being harder to achieve. 
So time is very important to put as much as you can into trading, but that balance is also very important. If I have a family and other obligations, then maybe becoming a full-time trader is not my goal. Maybe becoming a better trader is a goal and having more success swing trading. But again, we have to keep that balance because the last thing we wanna do is throw off everything just by putting in more time into these goals. Monetary targets, very straightforward. Educational goals. I want to put in two hours a week watching YouTube videos. I want to read Trading in the Zone by the end of April. Again, write these down. The more that these can be manifested in reality as opposed to just a little thought that's fluttering away in our heads, then perhaps we can stick to them a bit more and make them manifest into reality. Write down all your goals, monetary, educational, health and well-being. Make them nice and concrete and have something to strive for in 2020. So for me personally, looking back at 2019, the first thing I wanna do is, did I adhere to the goals that I had set at the end of 2018? And for me, heading into 2019, my goals were slow down, trade less, and practice swing trading. And those things were important to me because in 2017, there were big gains in the crypto space. In 2018, there were big gains in the marijuana sector. And if I had gone into 2019 trying to match those gains, I would have likely done more poorly than I ended up doing. And that's just because I knew to not anticipate that things could go that well three years in a row. That was really an anomaly in my opinion to see two breakout sectors back to back like that. So in the end, looking back at my results, I can see how many dollars did I trade in 2020 or 2019 versus 2018. And I dropped that down by a solid 40%. So check mark there, I traded less and that means waiting for better setups. That means not over trading in environments that do not favor big gains and big breakouts. And the second was swing trading. And I did definitely attempt to swing trade more. And my results say, you're better at day trading than you are swing trading. So I'm gonna to stick to day trading as much as I can. And part of that has to do with the fact that I'm always at the computer doing the chart, guys. The swing trades that did go well were the ones where I left the computer and I set my stop loss level and I stopped watching it. Because when I'm watching it, every tick for tick, it really inhibits my ability to look bigger picture and let trades ride out longer. Because I know short-term little moves are gonna be happening on the five minute time frame. And so if I'm looking at a day trade, but I'm gonna to have to sit through a five minute oversold bounce that I know is coming, and if I'm short, it's really hard for me to do that. So that was a check mark as far as goals for this, cur this current year. Looking back at my results, right now my stock account is about 40 to 50% higher than my annual goal. And my crypto account is probably about 90, 95% just below what my annual goal was. And that does not mean the two are equal or even close to equal because my goal is a dollar amount and my gains percentage wise in my crypto account were probably three times what they were in my stock account because I have much more money in my stock account than I do with my crypto account. But all in all, hit goals as far as monetary numbers that I was trying to hit this year. I can also look back at my results and see things like in the commodity space, what went well, what didn't go well. And by looking at my numbers, I can see I should trade less natural gas. I should trade more miners and gold. So that's something that I will look to execute in 2020. I will be trading less natural gas. I can also look at the marijuana sector and see that I traded very well in the Canadian sector, Canadian marijuana sector in 2019. And I didn't do that well in the US marijuana sector. It was very easy in the US sector in the spring. And then I gave back a good bit of those profits trying to keep trading it in the fall or the summer into the fall. So the lesson there is not necessarily that I was trading counter the trend because I was trading counter the Canadian marijuana sector trend and doing really well on oversold bounces. It just tells me that the lack of liquidity, the lack of volume, the wide bid and ask spreads are not ideal for my trading style. So I know heading into 2020, trade less US marijuana stocks, keep doing what you're doing in Canadian marijuana stocks. And those are just some slight adjustments that we can make. Now, I don't want to be a hypocrite because I personally don't keep track of my individual trades like I used to. I used to write down every entry exit and notes and all that data, which I no longer do being over nine years into trading right now. Things are going really well. Things are very easy. And that's something that I'll fall back on when if I ever run into a rut and you know, if I can't get out of a, a two or three red months in a row or something like that happens, then I'll go back and say, okay, it's time to start 
keeping better track of the trades I'm making so I can extrapolate data and use that data to my advantage. Again, we have so much data that we can compile as traders and then go back and reflect upon that we must be doing that when we're starting out to know, should I play oversold bounces? Should I stick to trading with the trend? Should I play commodities? Should I move around to different sectors? These are all things that are certainly important. So another thing I can do to look back upon is look at my monthly numbers, the profit and loss. And I can literally see my life events from 2019 depicted in what that chart looks like. So I had a good start to the year, a good spring, thanks to the marijuana sector. I can literally see the month that I bought my house. And then the following couple of months took a little bit of a dip in my account and my progress. The reason being, I was extremely distracted. I had the house closing to deal with. I had contractors, inspectors, deliveries. I had to move my life. I had to get into a new routine and a new flow, set up my trading space. These are all things that were very distracting and definitely impacted my trading. I can also see at the end of the year here, I've had a really good December and things have just been very in the zone, in the flow, tons of good trades, not many losers. And that's a direct result from our sale and at the end of the year, at the end of uh, November, the Black Friday sale, we had about 80 new members come in in a week or two. And I must admit, I felt pressure that first week after that huge influx of new members. As I'm doing my live streaming and I'm talking about my trades when I'm live, I normally don't feel pressure because I know most of the members that are here have been here for a while. And, you know, I've proven myself. I have a bit of a cushion to work with and they know that I'm going to have some slow weeks and I'm going to have some really good weeks. So wanting to perform for all these new people and do well, I felt that pressure and it definitely kick-started me getting into the zone and it was very beneficial just in hindsight because since that feeling of where I felt pressure, I have performed really well and it has been very easy to trade. And there are these periods when you are in your flow state where it's like you can't do any wrong. And I think I had a streak of 12 green trades in a row and it just I hope everybody can someday feel what it's like to get into that flow because it's literally like you can manifest money with your fingertips and it's very easy. Obviously trading does not stay easy, whether it's a change in the market cycle, a change in a life event or something along those lines, but there are periods of time where it is extremely easy and I'm fortunately in the middle of one of those and I can trace it back to that pressure that I felt to perform. So heading into 2020, I have some educational goals. I want to learn more about bonds. That's definitely a weak point as far as my knowledge base goes. And I want to learn more about passive instruments for generating income, places where I can park money and have it work for me. So those are two things that I'm going to be reading about and researching. As far as trading goes, January 1st means absolutely nothing to me. If I were in a rut and I were looking to change things up and get a new routine, I would absolutely use Jan January 1st as a catalyst and a, a break even clean slate point. But because December is going so well and I'm in my flow state, I'm gonna be doing exactly what I've been doing all December and try and keep this flow state going as long as possible into the new year and see how long I can keep that momentum going. Aside from that, I know that late summer, early fall, we're likely going to see some marijuana sector catalyst with the voting season coming up. And I know that if we have states like Florida voting for legalization, that as we get poll numbers and as we see the increased probability of who is going to be legalizing, that we're going to see price action reflect that. So I know to pay attention to the marijuana sector during that period in time. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep doing what I have been doing and capitalizing on short-term volatility. Like I said, my results tell me to focus on day trading still and to do less swing trading. Even though I may want to swing trade more, my results will be better if I do not. So I'm going to stick with what's working. I'm going to cut what doesn't work. Natural gas, U.S. marijuana stocks at this point in time are getting the boot and focus on what has been working well. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully this video was useful to pick up some tips on how to use our past to look forward and better our future as traders. Please like, share, subscribe if you found it useful. Let's go get 2020.